Yikes, the wheels definitely put me in my place this time. Or it could just be that I'm still trying to make videos and move house at the same time. Nevertheless, I need more time on that one and that's where today's video comes in to save the day. Mass Effect was the first Platinum I got for 2023. Being fresh off the heels of reigniting that passion and want to hunt trophies and achievements, I wanted to start Platinuming some of my all-time favourite games. The PS Plus free games for the month of December 2022 just so happened to include the Mass Effect Legendary Edition and I thought this was the perfect way to start that journey. Just for some background context, I've grown up with the science fiction genre. My dad loves it, and so I grew up watching films and series like Star Wars, Stargate, Starship Troopers, Alien, Predator, Star Trek, I mean the list goes on and on. So a good sci-fi game, yeah, that's right up my alley, and Mass Effect is one of the very best in my opinion. Now back in 2007, I was just 10 years old. I didn't understand all the complexities in the storytelling and characters. Hell, I don't even think I knew you could swap out equipment, but that didn't matter. I still loved characters like Rex, Garrus, and Tali. I loved exploring this galaxy, visiting all the planets, talking with my crew, deciding to be the good guy or a dick, using my weapons and biotics, I was obsessed with this game and ever since, even though Mass Effect 2 is my favourite game in the series, I've played the original Mass Effect by far and away the most. So yeah, I wanted to get the Platinum for the first Mass Effect and begin Platinuming the entire series. But what is the Platinum journey like for Mass Effect. Well, according to PSN profiles, it's not too difficult a task. Scoring a 3 out of 10 in difficulty can be done in a single playthrough and should take around 20 hours to complete. However, if you go into this Platinum with the aspiration to also 100% the entire collection, which has a separate trophy list that includes all three games, it's a bit more of an ask, upping the difficulty to a 6 out of 10. But as always, if you somehow have no idea what Mass Effect is, here's the basics. Mass Effect is an action RPG set in the Milky Way galaxy in the year 2183, in a universe where humanity has only recently discovered interstellar travel, finally joining the wealth of alien races in the galaxy, most of which are still not very comfortable with us joining the table as it were. We take on the role of Commander Shepard, who soon after we take over is the first human ever granted the honour of Spectre, basically a badass agent who can play fast and loose with the rules. And with our new prestigious position, we're on a mission to save the galaxy from a rogue Spectre who's working with an ancient alien race known as the Reapers who wiped out civilization long ago. Incredibly basic description. But hey, if you're watching this without playing Mass Effect for yourself, I mean, come on, what are you doing? But I guess that's all you need to know. But with everyone now caught up, let's get this Platinum. Now before you get into the game itself, first things first, we need to change the difficulty to Insanity. Mass Effect's hardest difficulty. This is one of the legendary edition trophies which you don't need to get to obtain the platinum, but as someone who has done this before, it's not really that bad, outside of a few moments I'll get into later. After changing the difficulty though, we started creating our character, which is where I made a decision that I thought was necessary to get this done in one playthrough, but after it was all said and done, I don't think it is. It may be a time saver, but that's about it. A lot of trophies revolve around specific abilities you use during combat, and no matter what class you pick, you won't have them all, which is where your crew comes into play to pick up the rest. If you choose a more tech-based class, you need to focus your crewmates into biotic-based characters and vice versa. I chose the engineer class for this playthrough as it has a couple of abilities that can be a bit fiddly, relying on very specific characters but again, in hindsight, it really isn't necessary. We finally completed our Commander Shepard and began our journey. Now before we get too far ahead of ourselves, be very careful with the missable trophy Archivist. You need to ask Anderson about the Protheans right at the beginning or else it's done. It's a short trophy for learning more about all the different alien races of this world, so it doesn't take too long to clean this one up if you do miss out, but still, it's easy to avoid. Avoid. Anyway, we complete the tutorial on Eden Prime where things go tits up due to a rogue Spectre agent called Saren 
and even though what happened was not our fault, we head to the Citadel to cop our wax from the council and with our Spectre promotion now in question. We need to convince them that something serious is afoot and through exploring the Citadel, we team up with the now iconic Rex, Garrus and Tali to help prove we are not at fault for what happened at Eden Prime. However, that's not all we're doing here because we do need to also be completing quite a few side quests along this journey to nab the trophy completionist for completing a very vague majority of the game. What does that mean exactly? Well, roughly, I think it's for completing around 40 to 50 quests out of a possible 80, I believe, maybe a little under. Not sure if that classifies as the majority, but anyway, we need to procrastinate saving the galaxy quite a bit here, as there are a number of time-specific quests, especially on the Citadel, that you need to complete before moving on, or you may be locked out. So we make our way through these various objectives from helping this man get some answers about why his wife's body cannot be returned home for a proper burial, all the way to simply interacting with a super fan. And in this process, we grab two ally based trophies for completing five quests with Caden and Ashley. It was my aunt. Which, spoilies, you want to make sure you get done sooner rather than later because one of them ain't making it to the end. <coughs> Ashley. <clears throat> Once we do as many quests as we can here on our first trip to the Citadel, we finally head back to the council to be inducted as a Spectre. Anderson, come with Before me. we leave on our new mission to save the galaxy, we manage to learn about all the races in this galaxy, whether they be council, non-council, or extinct, grabbing the archivist trophy we had and finally, after a solid few hours, we can actually head to our first real planet. You can pick and choose where you want to go first, but I decided to head to Therum to find and rescue Dr. Tassoni, as the sooner we get her a part of the team, the sooner I can complete some more quests with her and get to romancing for another one of the Legendary Edition trophies. Here on Therum is where we started to unlock some of the ability trophies, first for overloading 25 shields and using Sabbath. 25 times. But here was the first real hurdle for my insanity playthrough, mainly due to, I believe, being a little under leveled and under equipped for this mission, but damn, the boss fight here crushed me. Rex and Garrus were getting smoked within seconds if they were in the encounter to begin with. I was getting targeted so heavily when my crew was up. The Krogan rush and sprint towards me genuinely terrified me and I was just getting smacked around. Not as much as in a later encounter but still definitely took some luck and determination to finally get past this one. Too close, Commander. With Liara now a part of the crew, we headed back to the Citadel to knock out some more side quests, where we unlock the trophies for completing five more quests each with Garrus and Rex before heading out of the Citadel to visit our first uncharted planet. Drove around in the Mako for a bit, which quick sidebar, not too shabby. I remember it being a lot more jank. Anyway, after exploring this planet for a while, I went back to the main quest with our next stop being Pharos, which is jam packed with things to do. A lot of side quests and combat encounters to help knock out some more trophies. Here we unlock trophies for using Throw, Damping Field, Singularity, Neural Shock, Lift, Warp and Stasis all 25 times. I told you, a lot of enemies to take out here, which is why we also unlocked First Aid Specialist for using Medigel 50 times and unlocked our first Legendary Edition trophy for killing 250 enemies. Early on here on Pharos, we also completed another 5 quests with Tali and Liara, completing all of the crew based trophies. For all the combat here on Pharos, for the most part, it was nice and simple. You obviously need to be careful on Insanity, but with more gear and levels under my belt, it was much easier. Until we arrived at the Thorian Lair, which was very close to being the toughest encounter for me in the game. It's very close, but this is a slog not helped by my lack of health kits. From the Asaris to the hordes of zombies, all in tight quarters, yeesh. 
This was a real test that probably would have been a little easier if I was better equipped. I did finally conquer Pharos though, and, we're free of and you know the drill. Before heading off to the next main mission, I kept grinding away at some side quests where I unlocked Barrier Master for using Biotic Barrier 25 times in the process and then headed out to Novaria. Novaria is another lengthy planet with a lot more combat and side content, but it's here where if you want to be cautious, you can unlock the trophy principled for having 75% of the total Paragon or Renegade points. You can absolutely get this without the method I used here, but better safe than sorry, I thought. So here on Novaria, you can gather some evidence for a character, Lorik win and proceed with that conversation choosing the paragon or renegade option appealing to his ego and the conversation ends however if you just talk to him again, ask him another question and then ask to talk about something else, that previous dialogue wheel is back meaning you can get more good or bad boy points. Just do that until you hit 75% and the trophy is yours. But with that little glitch done, we made our way through Novaria using AI hacking 25 times to unlock the final combat related trophy and finished up business here you to move on to Vermeer, which is where everything starts to go down story-wise. Trophy-wise, not so much, but we do nab Charismatic for talking Rex out of his rage, but you can also unlock this by convincing Saren to... Uh, go for a long dirt nap in the final fight. Outside of that, we just plot along through Vermeer, battling Geth and Krogan, getting demolished by Geth snipers, letting Ashley sacrifice herself and say good riddance, and have our first battle with Saren the Rogue Spectre. This was a brutal encounter. Saren has a massive health bar, your team aren't much use, the cover is almost non-existent, and Geth are constantly spawning in to cause you to relocate. I was straight raging at this fight, I was stuck for a solid hour just trying to whittle down that health bar and get him to leave me alone, which thankfully after a bit more luck, we did just that. Now, at this point, we just had a couple of main missions left and the game was over. But we still had work to do for those sweet trophies, which led me to finally play Mass Effect's DLC content, Bring Down the Sky, which is something that I'm so thankful I finally played because this was a great quest. Tough encounters, lots of exploration in the Mako, a compelling quest all around. This was a good time, and it was here we completed some more side missions, which unlocked the completionist trophy a little earlier than I expected. All that was left was to explore four and eight more uncharted planets, which all you need to do is land on these planets and back out if you don't feel like exploring. And from here we begin the end. Over the course of the game, between missions I'd been making sure to chat up Liara. Finally, with the threat of death on the horizon, we play Hide the Salami, unlocking another Legendary Edition trophy, Shepherd. and head to Ilos to put a stop to Saren and the Reapers. We have a very final Warthog Run inspired sprint to the mass relay and complete Ilos, ending up on the Citadel left in ruins and ready to go toe to toe with Saren once more. Surprisingly, this fight wasn't too bad. It's definitely stressful for all the same reasons it was on Vermeer, but I didn't find myself really up against it. It felt tough, but fair, and with Saren defeated, we unlock our final trophies for beating the game, beating the game on Insanity difficulty, and the Platinum for Mass Effect was ours. ...of the Alliance forces, and Commander Shepard. We have gathered here to recognize the enormous- So, after 21 hours in total, what did I think of Mass Effect's Platinum and the game in general? I've played this game a lot, but I believe this playthrough was the first time I truly appreciated everything about the game. At 10 and 11 years of age, a lot's just gonna fly over your head, but today, I couldn't help but be in awe a little bit. This is a game I've played a million times, and only now am I getting all the intricacies and seeing these characters with much more clarity. It was awesome, and an absolute blast from beginning to end, and the trophies, for the most part, just enhanced that and let me see even more than I'd done before. Completing as many side missions as I could, 
finally playing the DLC, making sure I was switching up my crewmates to see how everyone reacts differently, utilizing all my team and I's abilities in combat, playing on the hardest difficulty and re-experiencing that challenge. Outside of the 75% Paragon or Renegade trophy, which I don't really like about the series because it does feel like a middle ground approach is just a waste of time, and it has to be black and white, which I don't think makes any sense for this series. Outside of that, the Platinum just felt really natural, which is what I'm looking for more than anything. I don't mind a grind here or there, but trophies that can make you try something different and also reward your natural curiosity is what I love to see, and that's most of what this game requires. Once again, if you've never played Mass Effect, step up. Seriously, you're missing out on one of the best sci-fi experiences gaming has to offer. This was so much fun, and I can't wait to finally platinum the rest of the series now as well. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure if you did enjoy the video to leave it a like because it helps let me know that you enjoyed yourself. Comment below if you'd like to see Mass Effect 2 get a platinum video soon, as well as some more platinum suggestions. Shout out to the channel members, Infamous to Hellfire, Featuring Gagiano, Christian Vilgag, Cloud Connection, Kranatoko, Crumb Sparky, Driftum, Erlium, Gregors, Milk the Cow, Pero, Stud Fox, Myth Aaron, Viper Dog, Dark Wolf, Fleet of Feet, Scott Unwin, and Adden Venture. For that extra level of support, I truly do appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, go give my socials a follow if you fancy at Mare Hair Bear, and I'll catch you all in the next video.